All right, we got this big old gateway in here. Well, check out this gateway. This is your typical rubber roof. Got some serious marring on the side here. Then uh, you can tell somebody's already gone over this with some more caulking. You can see the see how that's pressing down there. That's because that piece in there, that piece that's in there. There's an aluminum shoulder right here. It's not fastened down good enough. We put protective strips on those when we do them. At, you know, we're going to make sure it's fastened down well, for sure. But that's what we'll end up doing. But these here, what they want you to do in the RV industry is keep slathering more of this stuff on here. Don't do that. It's just, it's going to build a moat, especially around a vent. But, you know, you, you, just, you just don't need to do that. But that's the RV's way, the RV industry's way of keeping their hand in your wallet. Then they want you to put a coating on here. They want you to put a conditioner on here and they want you to massage it and love it and you know coddle it and rock it to sleep but this is a vent absolutely useless absolutely useless the only way a vent works is if it has draw now if that vent really was to work you'd think it would probably be put at the highest point of the roof which is that plumbing cap but it could have been put over here next to it it doesn't do anything at all it's useless so we'll end up taking that out if it doesn't have a draw where it's going to pull now, uh, Lamanco and also uh, Owens Corning, they have a couple of videos on YouTube about how vents work. Now, on a regular building, on your house, you'll have a ridge vent way at the top of the peak. And then at the bottom, where your gutter is, like right here, you'd have a soffit vent. And that's how it circulates. But if you can't get that circulation, it's not going to function. So, but uh, got a lot of bruising on here. We'll have to get those covers off. We may have to take a disc grinder and grind that right off there. Or maybe we'll even cut it out and heat weld another piece in there. What do you think of that? <laughs> but see what we got on the other side. But some of these areas are real problematic. And see how that cracking is right there? They're gonna want you to go back and yet put more on, more on, more on. The only ones that put more on is a moron. These here, like I said, they're gonna keep wanting you to doll it up. Keep going all that up. And then as you see, when you move the ladder, that'll help me that gap get. So you put more on there, right? What do you think is gonna happen? You come up the ladder, you're gonna crack it again. Same thing, you gotta get a service up here if you, even if you want to come up and wash the roof, you're gonna compromise that. So it's just a terrible design. Imagine getting tires and then the salesman comes out, gives you a receipt and says, Hey, by the way, what you need to do is put air in those tires every three months because they're gonna go dead flat on you. You'd be like, I don't want those tires. Give me the solid rubber ones. So you see how much more they slobbered on there too? See? They got it all, all slobbered around here. You got these little pock holes. So what happens with this product, and the reason why it keeps fracturing, is the best I can figure this to be is kind of like a latex acrylic butyl mix. So the latex, or the acrylic part of it, will start fracturing. And the, uh, as you can see, now this one doesn't have a hard shell. Typically, it's indicative that it would have more of a harder shell if it was an acrylic. But once that fractures like that, the butyl up underneath gets dried out. That's why you have to keep dolling it up. But you figure if you kept dolling this up, dolling it up, dolling, we'll say the we'll say just for argument's sake, we'll say that system did work. All right, every three months you get up there and you put some more, some more, some more, some more, some more. Pretty soon you'd have you know a whole moat going around here. Water couldn't even get out. So. It just it just doesn't make sense and these really need to be primed when you put these on here if you don't prime them it will come off see now you look I just did that with my finger but look how clean see if I can zoom in a little bit see how clean that looks if it's stuck you'd see residue much like on the other side here where all that dirt is that dirt stuck but this doesn't stick at all And that's how you get your leaks right there so that's why we don't use that same thing here slobber some more caulking now here's something that's pretty common these antennas leak a lot they leak because once they stand up you know they're rocking back and forth they compromise the plate here we will not be putting this back on the other thing you need to do is make sure this boot is sealed because when the wire comes on down here it'll get behind that boot and when it gets down behind that boot it'll get right inside the coach so you want to make sure that son of a gun stays sealed. So it looks like somebody did put something on top of that one. Now that's a plus. Look at that little hole right there. See? 
there's a leak right there so can't see on the other side but again we'll say that system worked put some more you can see it right here there's a guy throw a tire mount so when this thing rocks back and forth hey you got that right there now this little piece right here and then uh, we'll say the same scenario it worked imagine building up caulking keep building up caulking keep building up. if it did work and they say you can get you know 10 12 years out of these roofs every three months you put an application on there well that's what for a year you're gonna put 40 applications you'd be you would literally be probably about an inch thick with a moat around this thing that'd be crazy but the other thing that I don't like is this is what the curbs help look how low this air conditioner is that black piece up underneath there is just a piece of foam that's what it is right here that you can see it's focusing on my finger but that's what it is there's a piece of foam under there there's not a lot of room for drainage so now there's another system it's been out for a few years anyways it's called spray on a spray on application they're going to probably try to clean this up oh it feels pretty good let's spray it so they'll spray over this when they spray over that a spray on application is about 186 187 mils that translates into about three sixteenths of an inch so this here is only three quarters of an inch and then you squash it down to about half that and that's about three eighths you barely have I don't think you have three quarter maybe on this little bit of shoulder where, where it's rolling you may have about three three quarter or a little better five eighths but definitely not in the center over there you don't have that so when you keep building that up now it's going to affect up underneath the air conditioner right in the front here there's a couple of portholes that's where it drains that's where all your condensation is going to come from so if you keep spraying all up underneath there well now you're going to have an issue with the drainage properly so I don't like that system at all everything we do is on a commercial level it's a, an ex exact re replica of a commercial roof the only difference is the curves are more shallow and I design the curves I design them to function so you get on a commercial roof you buy the curbs you buy all the ones you need for whatever size air unit you need you buy boots that go around for plumbing you buy all that you when you make curbs and when you buy the curbs and install them then they have special pieces that go around they call them inside and outside corners for different applications but in this case for a curb you'd have an outside corner and the curves are really really big they wouldn't function properly on an RV I mean some of the curves are as big as this whole unit you see when it's carrying a big air conditioner so it's not going to function right so that's what they do on a commercial level you buy the puzzle and you put the puzzle together that's how that works but what I did is I, I designed the puzzle so it functions so whatever curb is here this one obviously the ones for the vents and even these ones in all different shapes I've done all different kinds and styles there's um, a cyclone that's up on our YouTube channel and we did a custom curb for one of those uh, huge satellites that come up and spin those big satellite dishes take a look at that one if you like and you'll see some of the work that we do because I want it to look clean I want it to look professional this I don't want to look like we just made a square box slap it down put this on slap it down we don't do that kind of work so we, people take pride in their coaches and we take pride in our work so we got some more this is where a lot of issues some folks have right here is because the water will sit and hit right here so you know, we we're not going to be able to change the dynamics of this at all but we are going to use a better ceiling and you can see again how this is fracturing right here they want you to put more on look at this right here that's a sharp edge I'm going to put this camera down for a second and see if I got my pocket knife on me and I'm going to see what that's Okay, so I'm gonna see where they go right here. Let's see what's underneath this thing. Probably need to sharpen this. Cut this out. <laughs> Look at there. It was a staple. Wow. Well, eventually that staple is going to breach, but you can see even if I turn the camera around a little bit, give you a better view at it. See how it's it's not even, you can see where the knife will go. See how I get, I'm looking at a backwards camera here.
See if I can figure out how to operate a camera. I can put a roof on better than I can do video, that's for sure. You see how that gap is right there? We're going to fasten this down and we're going to put a protective strip over this right here. And that'll, not, it's going to be glued as well. So it'll be glued to hold it down. Plus, we're going to make sure this is fastened down real well, even if we have to add more. So, but that's a staple right there, you can see. And then this, all right, what you're looking at right here, the way they decided to protect this, that's this here, that's just duct tape. That's all it is. It's just black duct tape. They just put it on there to, to pr try to, pr that's their way of protecting from that edge, as you can see, it doesn't do a very good job. Nor does it have the holding power like what we do to hold it down and keep everything tight. So, but we'll show you more when we tear this off. I just like to give an overview of what we got, and uh, so you see what we're what we're up against. I don't think in the, or suspect that there's much deck damage to this. I think it's pretty straightforward. We should be able to tear this roof off and get it going, and uh, put the new one down. And then um, the other. Now look at this roof. I want to show you this too. Gonna walk back here. This roof line it goes up. So now imagine how much water, just water, you get caught in a heavy storm, how much water is pouring down. And what is it doing? It's slamming into this piece of foam gasket up underneath there. Look how shallow that is. It's just slamming up into them. So when we put a curb up there, the curb will have uh, counter flashing on it, and, it'll, and also there'll be a, another piece of counter flash. I double all this up. But it'll have another one but it'll may force the water to go around it's not going to slam right on that foam gasket it's going to be elevated so and that'll uh prevent from having any leaks right there and again it'll all be heat welded you won't have to try to reach under there or anything and try to cock it so anyhow this is our gateway and uh, we'll show you more as we get going with this thing you can see how much someone slobbered on here too this looks like it's all squiggled look at there that's not so well. Hey, okay. ta-da! But uh, anyhow, like I said, that's our gateway. We're gonna get her all fixed up and give you an overview. Uh, this is our gateway. We've got the roof stripped off, as you can see. So now what we're looking at is some of the decking, make sure it's all set. So one of the things that we noticed, and well, we could just roof over this, but. Look at that kind of a dip right there. That is a serious sag. See how much it's sagged? That's quite a bit. So, instead of, uh, what we're going to try and do is we're going to pull this piece up and see if we can strengthen it. But it's got a really bad dip and it's on the shoulder. So when it comes around the shoulder, it rolls down, then it comes back up. So we're going to see if we can straighten that out. The other side, it's got a little bit, but it's nothing like this. This is significant, I think. So that's what we're going to fix. Somebody else would just go over it, but I think it would look sour. And the other thing it would probably do when we put the roof on there, you've got this dip. The roof wants to really just lay two dimensionally, and now you've got a little camber. And then we're coming up this way, so there's your two. And then you add this, that's three. And the roofing won't want to do that. So what'll happen is that bubble will want to try to work somewhere else. So we're going to see if we take this out. We just got a few of these screws we're taking out. This is an aluminum truss, and these are little screws that they use. More than likely, it's not screwed down, uh, glued down. So. Yeah, you got a couple more. I don't know if you got these ones over here, did you? Let us get some of these screws out, and then we'll see what's up underneath this thing. We're just going to lift it up and see if we can get something in there, give it some strength. Even if we stretch something across, just so it pulls this sag and just makes it balance out. Okay, so now we got the panel up. And then that's probably in there to hold something else when they screwed it up this way. But look at it. Just give you all an idea how the way they put these things together. That's good right there. This, staples. They use staples to hold this piece in here. The framework. Yeah, this is for the skylight. And the same over here. Look at there. So how they put all that in there. So, and a lot of people like the aluminum, but they don't always weld them. See, the only that's all it is, just boogered right there. There's nothing on that side. That's just a tack weld. That's all that is. You know, we got a little bit more on this edge piece, but that's about it. They don't usually weld these things 
Well, this one is welded much better over here on this one, so that's a plus. And then uh, even that there, so a lot of times I just see them boogered over like that. There is something on the other side that I can feel, so that's not all so bad. We could have brought that over though. So I don't know how the rest of them are. I guess it depends on uh, the mood the guy was in, if he wanted to do a good job or not. If he just wanted to kick it out, the boss was leaning on him to get him out. So we're going to run a piece from here over to here, which will take out that belly that we had. So we're going to run one up there, one here, and then look at this span. You got this one here, and then to here, and then from here all the way to there. So you got a really big span there. So we're probably going to put another piece here. Let's see if we can all the way down there. There you go. So that's how they put them all together. You can see all the staples they use. Everything's just stapled. That's a staple in there. That's a staple in there. And the other thing, it's not glued either. So this coach is racking. You can see like right here, we can move that. You know, the decking, when we put it on, we'll fasten it all back together. But there's just no way that I could take this whole thing apart to fix all that. So, and that's how they got this one. So, but that's what we're going to work on. We'll show you when we get that put back together. On, um, you can see some of these rusty screws, uh, staples. See those staples? They're rusty. Why would they be rusty? That is indicative that water is getting down behind here, despite all that slobber and butyl. So, well, we're going to, uh, this one isn't so bad. But then I got another rusty one right here. Now, and some of it could be because of the top where the turn bar goes. If that wasn't sealed really good, then it will. That's why we always put three. We got one strike and we put the turn bar on right here. The roof will come over, turn bar goes on. But when we put the turn bar on, we put the adhesive, the structural adhesive sealant, we put that on the back, squash it in, and then it burps out the top, strike it down. And then once we do that, we put another bead on there. And then when that bead cares, we go back yet with another bead. So you really get quite a few, with three layers on there. And we want to make sure it doesn't leak for sure because they do all this flexing. So, and all they do to cover all this, you can see all them sharp edges right there. All they do is use this tape. There it is, Gorilla Tape. Boom, you can see the tape marks right there anyways. That's all they did to cover that. We're going to be putting protective strips on there. Those are the ones we use. Some more rusty staples here, here. But yeah, so that's for an antenna right there. So we'll, uh, and this is what they use to cover over all the joints. That's just drywall mesh. I don't know how much cheaper you can get. But I know in the future I'll be finding out how much you really can get. That's just terrible. We'll be back with more. We'll show you the rest of what we're going to do over here. You see something over there? Oh. What is that? Very interesting. Look like moisture. See. Let's see. Uh, take all that back. It is fly pee. That's what it is. It is. You can't smell that. It smells like fly piss. That's a big old fly. <laughs> we'll dry it out and see where it came from. It made a leak in there and then it was sitting on top of here and just washed out, but we'll dry it out. We'll get it fixed up. All right, let me give you a gateway update. So we had some issues over here with that big belly. So what we did is we stitched some steel in here and take that out. We're going to lower this back down and we'll glue it and fasten it. Now this roof deck is not glued down because they put this radiant barrier on here. Now this radiant barrier, here's their thought. Let's put that radiant barrier on there to reflect UV light. Well, technically it can work. However, the bad part is there's no real cavity up underneath here. You see, if there's, it may still reflect a little bit but not as efficient as it would if it had a good three quarters of an inch gap below this piece. So you can't glue them down because they've got this down here. So they should have done all that should have been cut and tucked down and then glued and fastened down in there. That would be a lot of work for us to try to pull that up. We'll see if the owner wants to do it. If it were mine, I'd do it because these rack and twist and shift a lot. But again, not my, it's not my coach, so I'll have to get approval before we move forward with that. But uh, that's how we did this fix here. So now that'll lay nice and even and flat like it should. 
and we wouldn't have that belly like I showed you earlier on this. And obviously we'll put the shoulder back and go the route with the rest of it. So, <coughs> excuse me, let me show you what we got going on in the back is some delamination. And that's what we're working with trying to get that wall. This whole thing, the way they normally do these, these walls, is this piece of phylon is glued to a piece of luon and then they glue that to the studs so it looks to be that the glue has broke loose and that's what we're investigating right now and we'll give you a better update but you can we got to try to get that window out and that's what we're working on right now once we get that out and get this corner mold down then i can see what's going on and we'll see make the proper repair now that's something that the owner did want to have addressed so we're doing a prudent measure to Check it out at least, and then we'll see what the repairs are, and we'll keep you updated on the rest of this. And this is our big old gateway. The back wall was not seated. So, there's no glue on it whatsoever. There's no glue. They got this vapor barrier here on again, this aluminum shield, but it's not glued. So if this ain't glued, you can't glue this to this, and nothing's glued. So it's all, it's all just flopping loose in the frame. Check out this frame here. Let's see if I can... Look at there. So I think we got to do a little something here, huh? So we're going to see if we can't get this fixed. We were thinking of, our first thought was to find where the studs were and put some big old roofing nails right through here, and then we get some touch-up paint. You know? You know? But that's what we're working with right now. Everybody got it? Yeah, we're going to have to hang it. So let's see, there's not any glue on there at all. And then this... Let's see where that went. It's right up there by the window. Hey, check right here. See if there's some solid stock where the screws went in for the ladder. Is there any solid stock behind there? You can pull that. Yeah, just pull that. Let's see. Yeah, yep. good. Good. I want to make sure. I've worked on some. They don't have anything in there. They just staple it all together. Actually, that's what this looks like. It was. Oh, gee whiz. Look at here. Another <laughs> Man, I'm an avid power lifter, but gee whiz, I'm pulling studs out of the wall here. <laughs> sure, I knock back those steroids, I guess. Look at that thing. You can hear it. Here's all clapping down there. Whole thing is loose. So we're going to have to reframe, well, not reframe it, but we definitely have to get some more fasteners. All right, we'll be back with more on our great gateway. Okay. So on this back wall is gateway. They show you how how loose it is. See how it's just flopping. So this wall gets screwed into the floor. All right. So here's the screws. There's one. There's another. And where's the other? See how many they got here? Looks like they only have a couple. Yeah, they have two. There's one right here. Okay. Well. For, these screws don't go, they're too short. They don't even make it. I put my hand up behind there, and there's nothing. It doesn't even come through that wall. So we're going to have to obviously get bigger screws in there to secure all that together. This doesn't look terrible. I've seen worse. Probably isn't even worth arguing over. We'll probably put a plate of metal on there. It's not really rotted. It's more damp and wet and stained and ugly. But so, but this one here, same thing. These screws. Who's got a screw gun? You got a screw gun? I want to see this. Let's see if I can operate this gun left handed. I don't want to come out. It's too short. Nope. I don't know what that one is. Okay, that one's in. See, that's a longer screw. These ones are the short ones. They don't go anywhere. So these ones are too short, they're not making it. That's why they're doing that. So anyhow, it's uh that's where we're at. So we're gonna screw it all back together and then we're gonna see if we can get another piece of sheathing on it. If I can, then I'd feel better with another piece. I gotta see if it all fit. It may not all fit. So what we also learned is that this isn't really Luan, it's not wood, it's um a composite material that they've used. They come out and they, it begins with an A, I forgot the name of it, Azel or something along that lines, and all that's all glued together for it. That's what it is. This isn't Luan, it's actually a composite. So we have to make sure we can get it, if we're going to put it on there, we've got to try to glue it back to the studs and get it pressed. So that's what we're looking at. The other thing I don't like, look here, you got this wire. 
Look at that. So this sits on there. That wire isn't even notched through there. So we're going to have to fix that problem right there. <laughs> At least get that in, in here. Hey, okay. should have went in the hole there, but it didn't. So these are some of the things we come across. We like to try to fix these because I want someone rolling out and then say, hey, my lights don't work or this doesn't work. And, uh, you know, they did it wrong here. So we're going to have to probably cut that wire unless we, it looks like it goes right there. We may be able to just feed it through there. We'll make a little trough there and drop it in, but we'll do something to get that fixed. Put a plate on it, make sure no fasteners go through it and uh, check the rest of it and see what we got. But, uh, wow, talk about slapping it together and getting it out, getting it sold, huh? They didn't stop at the roof, eh? Any place they can do just to get it done quick and get it out. All right, we'll show All you more. Right. Back at our gateway. Well, so we did some investigation and I didn't like it. So out it came. Took this piece out. Didn't like that either. Let's rip it out. So we get that all done right. We actually added this one in here. And we added another one down here. We added that one in there. There wasn't anything in there. So it's going to line up with these studs coming down, which is good because we're going to laminate. We're going to glue on and fasten another piece of glue on the back. Once I get that done, then I can put this and glue it to the Luon, it's going to have a lot more strength. That's the only way you can do it. What they did here, well, you saw they had the foil on there and everything else. So, you know, this needs to be done this way. It's, it's not going to function any other way. It's not going to have any strength. So that's what we're working on. And we're just cutting down some, we're just cutting down some panel now to put in here. And it's a little taller, so we may end up going with a piece this way, and then from the top down, we'll have another piece that'll run and cap that, so we have plenty of strength for those joints where they are. If we went up to the eight foot up that way, then that means I'd have to put little blockers in there to make sure it all gets pinned in and has some strength going across. So we're just going to drop it down, then we'll rip another little piece that'll go from there up to the top, all the way across. All right, that's where we are so far. And then we also fix this wire here, the one that was stuck out. We got that tucked in behind there, and I'm going to put a plate on here in just a second so we make sure that we don't even put any staples or anything through it. All right, gateway update. Let's check out what we've been doing. You can see all this decking that come down, and we shall explain. All right, in the back, we did the repairs. Did the repairs on the back. We glued a whole new piece on there. It's glued and fastened, but we glued it pretty good. Actually, here's some of the glue. And then uh, we gotta cut the window out. So now we're gonna glue the actual back veneer to there. It'll be fully adhered like it should have been. So that's where we're at with that. Now we go upstairs. And the other day, when I was telling you about the decking and what I thought we should do I mentioned it to the owner and that's what he did so aluminum truss assembly we had all that OSB on here and we had this just laying on there so it wasn't glued and what I recommended was we push this down tuck it in so we can get new decking on here and that's what we did that's we're gonna throw all that trash away right there maybe make a cool dog house with it or something but we're gonna put uh, some plywood up on here instead of the OSB. That's what we're gonna do. It's all prepped. So what we did is we cut it, dropped it back down. These are the real heavy duty screws they used. Look at those little things. That's not very good. Not very strong. There's only a, it's not even in there that much. So what happens when you don't glue these, see if I can show you. But when you don't glue them in, the screw goes in and as the coach racks, this screw kind of wallers back and forth, and then it'll waller a hole in there. And this is just light gauge aluminum. This isn't anything heavy duty by no means. So it'll start wallowing and the roof deck comes loose. So that's what we're gonna do is refasten it down, but we'll be using much better screws and uh, we'll be putting in more screws, but it'll also be glued. So here's the one here. And it's not gonna stay, so you just unscrew it with your finger. Right there. That's how easy that one came out. So, so all we do is, like I said, tuck this down, and uh, that's where we are right now. So we're going to get ready to put some 
uh, decking on here in a little bit and we'll be like I said gluing it all down and getting nice and tight and we'll glue that too. Right here we're probably going to see if we can find a little bushing or something to put in there so this wire doesn't get compromised on here. So we'll find that bushing. Let's see if we got if we got any more we're going to do them to all of them. One, two, three, we got four pipes. Yep, we got four pipes. So that's what's great about the way we got this set up. We can walk all around the coach. It's comfortable. We get the job done properly. So that's what we got here. Antenna. Hmm? Right there. Yeah, that's what you're pointing out. And then this was the repair I showed you, and that had the board that was held up. And then I said, we'll talk to the owner and see what they want to do. So they went with my suggestion to actually glue it all down. So, but you can see, like on this particular one, there's one screw right there. The next screw is was way over there. That's a oh gee whiz, that's got to be almost what 20 inches apart. Yeah, the, uh, here's a good example right here. Yeah, here's another one right here. So the next one's all the way there. What do you got from that screw to that screw? Yeah, it's almost inches. just at 20 inches. <laughs> I wonder if they laid them out that way, 20 inches. That's not a lot of screws though, especially on a coach this size. You really want to keep that roof down tight. So we're gonna get some decking on and we'll show you the rest of our magic as we work this coach and get her all squared away. And that back wall, we're gonna, like I said, laminate all that together too. So but this will be a much, much better uh, scenario for them. So now the aluminum's down here, which will help reflect some of that light. That, that, that was pretty much the design of it anyways. So we kind of made it happen. Well, we're there. We'll be back with more from RV Roof Install Studio Productions here in Fort Oglethorpe. Subscribe! All right, so we've got the decking going down. And you can see we've got some good old glue right there. It really puts them on there. We're going down every truss. Now what we're doing is we're using some bigger screws. And these are self tappers. These are what should have been used anyways. And what they do is they're going to pull into the aluminum right here. Yeah, actually you can see all that glue too. A whole bunch of it all up on here. Okay, all the way down there. So it's going to pull that right down and real tight as well. So that's the way it needs to be done. Look at the way this guy works that. Look at that. That is perfect precision right there. If that guy doesn't know how to screw, I don't know who does. Our training courses have been paying off. Well, he's already got one ahead of you. Yeah, let's pick up the pace there. Oh. That's where we're at so far with our gateway. That's how you get a hole in the roof, right there. <laughs> Alright, quiet on the set! Alright, this is our gateway update. I'm going to show you what we got going on. You don't want your ugly mugs on camera on YouTube. You better, better put your masks on. Uh, all right, so we got our roof redecked, and now we've got all our protective strips in there. So we've got all those down. We also got this glue one on here. So did you already get it glued on there? Oh yeah. Yep. That looks good. So we just sprayed that on there. We reframed the whole thing. I think we showed you that. We fixed a couple of that framing down the bottom down there that I showed you before we fix that and uh, yeah that's right because there was an electrical plate and I said we got to get that electrical plate in which we put in it, it basically just it was a protective one so you don't put a staple through it and now we just got this back piece put on here and, uh, and that's it so far so now the next step is to get the roofing on and then get our curves in place and start putting everything all back together get the window in all that jazz so that's what we're working on so we're just like I say, getting all these protective strips down here right now. So that's our update. We'll be back with more on our gateway. Right. So now on our gateway, we've got this side of the roof all glued. Then we'll flop her over and then we do the other side. We already got the back done. 
we get corner mold to put on and things like that. So that's where we are so far. We've got a whole bunch of glue on there. We're just gonna see. We, we sometimes we'll put the fan on. It just gets more air in there, and sometimes it just helps it flash off a little easier, a little quicker. Especially when we put the heater on. We'll be back. Okay, this is our gateway update. We cut out the holes. And now what we're doing is some of these already mounted. We just go along, we're gonna heat weld all this in there. But all that there's three inches from here to there. We're gonna weld the whole thing together. We do the same over there, then we set the bead on it. So you can, we'll, we'll get another roller and we'll roll that down so it's nice and smooth. I like this one over here, we already got done. Okay. Roll it down nice and tight. You see we get the screws on there, how it's fastened in there. Yep. And then over here I guess we're cutting the square holes. I don't know what for. I mean for a little Peak window, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I know. He's just cutting some reference holes here. This is where the turn bar when it comes down. So we gotta make a, a fold in here when this comes in. See how that you got a pucker? And then when you bring the other one, you're gonna have a pucker right there. It's called a fish mouth. You know what we'll do is end up trying to fold that back over. We're not gonna cut it at all. All we do is heat weld it all back and kind of fold it over, much like a uh, like you do the sheets on a on a bed, I guess, on the corners. So that's where we are so far on this lovely Sunday. It's Rat Pack Day. That's what we listen to on Sunday, the Rat Pack. These are the rest of the curbs. We got a little bit here. We're plugging. We got the back done. So we still got to put in the window. Put the lights on and seal her up. And she should be ready to go. Okay, this is our update on our gateway. We got the holes cut out. Got a couple of these curbs already put down here. The first one up here. That one's already done and welded in. We're working on this one over here. We really fasten them all down. We get fastened down in there. You can see the screws in the corner. Everything got to be clean. That's what we're working on right now. We're getting all that together. So we'll get the turn bar on here. That's a marking out for it as well. So you can see that we've got our protective strips up underneath here. You can see them over there as well. So we redecked this one. So we'll be back. We'll give you another update on this. On this, this is the one we fixed the back wall to. So. All right, this is our gateway. She's done. All set. Ready to go. Nice stairs. It makes it easier to come up these stairs and look at your own camper walk around so you can actually see what's going on there's our stamp right there rvroofinstall.com January 19 so what we got is 60 mil GAF that's what it is it's a 60 mil GAF brand roofing material everything's all heat welded together we've also got two strikes of caulking all the way around the perimeter you see we got our little fabricated stands we put there it just gives it balance that's all it does and then we have the 
There's a counter flash we put on the front of the air conditioners. You probably could see some stripes going through here. Those are the protective strips that we put down. Make those custom boots right there. All this is all heat welded in. Everything's heat welded. This is all heat welded. So you're not going to have to keep slobbering the caulking like they do on here. And you can see there's some slobbered on here. But the water isn't going to be eroded away like it would being down below like this. And this is a construction adhesive sealant. This is not your run-of-the-mill die core. This is like liquid nails on steroids to be designed to be outside. So that's going to keep it a lot cool, a lot Excuse me, it's going to keep a lot more watertight. Need more coffee. Alright, so the way we design these, you have some the water coming across the roof. And as it comes across the roof, it's going to hit up on here probably on a heavy rain. We'll say the rain is just really heavy, just the wind's blowing. So maybe if it drives up on there, it's going to get pushed out here. The other thing we did is we made a recession down on the counter flash. What that does is the water that gets on here isn't going back that way either. It's going to roll off. So I don't know if you can see that, but it kind of has a little slope to it. Like I said, like a recession. So again, all this is all heat welded. All those are all heat welded. Everything's all heat welded here. So now going on this curb here, the counter flashing that's sitting on the bottom of that AC right there. What that does is it comes down below this so the water that's coming on the AC, as it's rolling around, will get forced below this, and then it'll get forced out. And that's what it's, you can see it right here on this front AC. See how much lower it is? And that's the whole idea. So you can also see, if you look at the curb, you'll notice the air conditioner is more towards the front of that curb. They're all like that, compared to the back. See on the back here? And then also this side, there's a lot of room. So. And also the bottom part of that air conditioner, it's got kind of some like corrugation and just different profiles where the water isn't going to travel that way. We're more concerned about water trying to come down and then trickle back or get forced back through the wind back into the, there's a foam gasket underneath there. They're way up underneath there. They all have foam gaskets. But that's what we're concerned about and that's why I designed this system that way. Again, same technique here. You can see the recession right here that we designed in it. Right. So that's about us. This is a, again, this is a GAF brand 60 mil. It's a structured membrane. Structured membrane means it has a weave in it or a mesh. And that is good against impacts. Uh, impacts on like um, tree branches or hail, uh, things like that. We do the same on the ladder. Oh, we just just put the darker, the black material in there on top of the portable that we use, and yeah, just so it looks and kind of matches. That's about all. But the uh, there's also a, a strip right here, a protective strip as well, because of the shoulder. So we put one there because this is a metal shoulder. It's an aluminum shoulder, and we don't want it to ever compromise the main roof. And that's the whole scope of it. You, know, you don't want to do these twice. You don't want to do these twice at all. They're just uh, too expensive to do twice. And there's a lot of work to them when you start doing them. Uh, we put commercial buildings on quicker than some of these coaches, that's for sure. So, but it really is. It, it can, there's a lot. All of these come off. This is a termination bar. This is what we call a termination bar. This comes off, and then all that's got to get cleaned, and then it's got to get painted. And then all those components and covers, those all come off, got to get painted. We trash the plumbing we just get rid of those because we make the special boots and those are just bell caps that go in there so that's a plus then the roof deck depending on what's wrong with it how much repairs we got to do it may need to be refastened down or we may need to go in you've seen some of the other ones even on this this one here we had to fix the back wall on this particular one then we got to make all these protective strips up so there's there is quite a bit of work to, to prepping this properly if you don't prep it and then it's not going to stay. Even on here, I don't know if you can see that right. Let's see if the camera will pick it up right in there. That's a special primer that we use that pulls the caulking in. 
so if you don't use it it won't stick but you can't put too much on there on this one here that's not bad because this is a tan roof but if this was white you'd see the gold stripe right there and you can't swash it all the way down with a big brush because it just wouldn't look right so we have to take our time and do things right so not only is it looking good but in staying watertight at the same time you need kind of both there you don't want to hey it's watertight but it looks terrible you know well uh, you can give us a call at 423-475-7663 or again you can log on to rvroofinstall.com all our roofs are branded this way and the inspections are free just come in once a year the first initial inspection we like to see the coach back about 30 to 45 days if that's not feasible for you then uh, you, you can we'll show you how to do the inspection but we really would like you to come back and what we're looking for on the inspection just to make sure all the caulking is seated well every coach has its own little twist and rack and flex and we want to make sure we addressed all that then you come back once a year and we're going to be going over the whole roof again to make sure that everything's doing and performing the way you paid us to make it work right so uh and if also if you want a sample you can call us we have some samples i'll see if i can get one on another clip for you in a second here this is our gateway as you can see we've got it out of the other bay we brought it over here so once we did the roof system we checked the slide out roofs and those slide out roofs were not well so we had to replace them and that's what we did so we're going to show you how we did that there's no sense in putting another membrane roof down on top of this because there's a sweet gasket right here there's a sweet gasket so as that coach is going in and out it'll if there's an acorn or anything that gets stuck up there between the sweet gasket and the membrane roof it could poke a hole now the uh, product that we use for the roof is TPO membrane really thick but still why do it it just to me is seemed better to put a better product on What we're going to show you is how we go about that. Kind of give you an idea of what it looks like. This is an all metal pan, all metal roof nice and clean the other thing we did is try to get a color that we complement this coach and that come in pretty close so it looks I think it looks pretty daggum good come on back a little bit and give you an overview then what we'll do is we'll show you the inside and how it gets all flashed out so everything this piece is folded let's fold it this way then there's another fold so we'll we'll show you uh, all take that. a look at the inside Let's see if we can bring one of these out. Slide out. And we got this one coming in. Door side. So this is what I was talking about, that street gasket. I'm trying to get this thing out of the way, this little ladder. Let's see how that street gasket's right there. See, that's what it does, the same thing. So that's why we put the metal on there, and the metal gets turned up over here, and then we capped it right here, see? Then you don't ever have to worry about anything getting in there. We didn't tell them. They were all done the same way. Let me bring this one in a little bit. So we can move it. Do the same way. And we trimmed it out on the top. See? I don't know if you can see that or not. And then big hands out of there. So this goes down as you can see, everything's all trimmed out. There's just no way it can leak. It's done. So if something got caught, if this was in a reverse situation and you're going in and the acorn or something got caught in there, it could potentially puncture this, especially this one not having any uh, slide-out toppers on it. It doesn't have any awnings on it. 
And then we did the bedroom as well. So, but uh, that's how we do the, the metal roofs on here. So, some of the things we do, just because you have a good product, doesn't mean that product's going to work well everywhere. For instance, again, going back to the TPO that we put on the roof, it's a great product, but I don't want to use it on here. I just don't think it would be a good application. Although, again, it's a great, rigid, strong product, but this is probably a more permanent solution. So, that's why you you got to know what materials to bring to the job to make a good job and a lasting job. Thanks for watching. And then uh, you can go out to look some more videos on our YouTube channel if you're already on it. And also you can um, get on our website, rvroofinstall.com. Give us a call. If you want some samples of the little roofs, we've got samples for them too for the membrane if you like to see that. Thanks for watching.